The liquid retina display on the iPhone XR is a thing of beauty, but a cracked display isn't. So today we're going to show you how to replace the display on your iPhone XR. Replacing it isn't that hard and it'll only take you about 40 minutes. For this repair you'll need a P2 Pentalo bit, a TriPoint Y000 bit, a Philips 000 bit, an eye opener, a set of iFixit opening picks, an ice clack, a spudger, some tweezers, and your replacement display. We also recommend that you use a magnetic mat so that you can mark where all the screws came from in your device. There are some different screw types and lengths that you'll need to be careful with. A couple quick warnings before you get started. Opening the iPhone's display will compromise its waterproof seals. Have replacement seals ready before you proceed past this step, or take care to avoid liquid exposure if you reassemble your phone without replacing the seals. Also, even when replacing your display with an OEM Apple display, True Tone functionality will be disabled after the replacement. And before you begin your repair, discharge your battery to below 25%. A charged lithium-ion battery can catch fire and or explode if you accidentally damage it while you're doing this repair. To begin, power off your iPhone and then remove the two P2 pentalobe screws at the bottom edge of the phone near the charging port. The iPhone's display is secured with some adhesive. Soften the adhesive by placing a heated eye opener on the bottom edge of the phone and leaving it there for about a minute. Some suction cups might have a hard time attaching to a cracked display. If you're having trouble getting them to stick, cover the display with a piece of clear packing tape. If you have an ice clack on hand, the next step will be easy, but if you only have an iFixit suction handle, we have a guide walking you through the opening procedure on iFixit.com. Position the cups of the ice clack near the bottom edge of the iPhone, one on the front and one on the back. Then press the cups firmly into place, making sure the suction engages. Hold on to your iPhone securely and close the handle of the ice clack so it slightly separates the screen from the rear case of your phone. But be careful, don't try and separate the whole thing, we're only trying to make a gap for the next step. When you see a small gap appear, insert an opening pick into the gap under the display to make sure that the adhesive doesn't re-adhere. Once inserted, slide the opening pick around the lower left corner and up the left edge of the iPhone. Make sure you slice through all the adhesive holding the display in place. Just be careful not to insert the pick too far, you could damage the internals. Take your pick and reinsert it at the bottom edge, but this time, slide it up the right side of the phone to continue separating the adhesive. The top edge of the display is held with both adhesive and clips, so gently pull the right edge of the display down slightly towards the lightning port and insert your pick in the top right corner. While gently pulling down, slide the pick across the top edge of the iPhone and cut all the adhesive in the way. Now, all the adhesive should be separated. You can open the iPhone by swinging the display up from the left side, kind of like the back cover of a book. But just be careful and don't try and lift it all the way off. It's still attached to the phone with some ribbon cables. Next, grab something for you to prop up the display, like an old iPhone box. You can even use a rubber band to hold it there. You'll need your Y000 bit to remove the three screws securing the battery connector in place, and then use some tweezers to remove the bracket from the phone. With the pointy tip of your spudger or a clean fingernail, pry the battery connector up and away from its socket on the logic board. Keep your Y000 in hand and remove the two screws holding down the display connector bracket, and use your tweezers to remove the bracket. Now disconnect the digitizer and display cable connectors with your spudger or fingernail. You now need to remove five screws securing the logic board connector bracket. Two are Phillips 000 and three are Y000. Remove those and then remove the bracket. Once again, use a spudger or clean fingernail to disconnect the front sensor assembly connector. And with that all done, the display is free. At the top of the display, the speaker assembly is being held down by three Phillips screws and one Y000 screw. Remove those now. Using your tweezers, gently flip the speaker assembly down, but be careful because it's still attached. Use your eye opener to heat up the top front of the display for one or two minutes so that we can soften the adhesive holding down the sensors. Then carefully slide the edge of your spudger underneath the flex cable, making sure to get under the microphone. Slowly twist the spudger to separate the microphone, lifting it up. Working from left to right, slide an opening pick beneath the flex cable and underneath the proximity sensor and flood illuminator module. Gently wiggle and lift the module from the notch in the front panel. With your tweezers, pull the small bracket straight up and off the ambient light sensor. Then use the same tweezers to wiggle the ambient light sensor from its notch in the display. Don't pull it off the display, it's still attached via the flex cable. 
remove the earpiece speaker, and front sensor assembly. Now we need to remove the LCD shield plate. Start by removing the five Y000 screws on the sides, then remove four more screws, two on the top and two on the bottom. Use your eye opener to soften the adhesive holding the screen cables down on the LCD shield. Insert an opening pick between the display cables and the LCD shield and slide it towards the bottom edge of the screen. Stop when you get to the end of the first wire. Next, stick your pick in again, but this time between the two cables, and slide downwards to separate the cables. Grab each cable near where it bends 90 degrees and pull them apart. Peel the entire digitizer cable away from the LCD shield and fold it aside. Grab the opening pick and insert it under the top edge of the LCD shield. Twist the pick to separate it from the display. Grab the LCD shield by its top edge and swing it upwards a few degrees. Then press gently on the lower part of the display cable with a spudger, pushing it through the cutout on the shield. Continue to raise the top edge of the LCD shield and feed the rest of the display cable through the cutout. Raise the LCD shield a bit higher and you can see the rest of the cable stuck to the back. Use your spudger to separate the display cable completely. As you lift the shield, take note of the metal prongs on the bottom edge. They will need to go back the same way during reassembly. Now you can remove the LCD shield and we can transfer it to our new display. Bring your new display over and align the metal prongs on the LCD shield at the bottom edge of the display. As you lower the LCD shield, you need to feed the display cable through the cutout in the shield. Then carefully lay the LCD shield down, making sure you aren't pinching any cables that could rip. Next, flip the digitizer cable onto the shield and press it down with your finger or a spudger. The connectors of these cables should be right next to each other when you're finished. Time to screw back in the screws that secure the LCD shield to the display. Grab your earpiece speaker and front sensor assembly and gently press the proximity sensor and flood illuminator into their respective slots on the display. Next, slide the ambient light sensor back into place with some tweezers and place its bracket straight onto it. Use your finger to gently press the microphone back into place, then press the flex cable below the microphone onto the display, making sure that it's well adhered. You can also use a spudger for this step. Now you can flip the speaker assembly over and reinstall the four screws securing it in place. In order to retain water resistance in your phone, you need to reapply adhesive to your display. We have a video on how to do that, and it's linked in the description below. Bring your display over to your phone, and with your clean finger or spudger, connect the cables from the display onto the logic board. and then screw in the brackets that cover them. Now you can connect the battery again, then lay the bracket back over its connector and screw it back into place. If your display still has an adhesive liner on, go ahead and remove it. Now we're ready to lower the display back onto the phone. Align the clips along the top edge and carefully press the top of the display into place before you press the rest of the display down. If you feel any resistance, check the condition of the clips around the perimeter of the display and make sure they're not bent. Lastly, go ahead and screw back in the Penelope screws.